Lovely. Well, hello everyone. Um, you can see we've got Danny Danny Rowe here on um, on Zwift riding this session today. Um, I'm Matt Rowe. We're we're both coaches at Rowan King, and Danny is doing a recon of the the world's road race course on Innsbruck. So uh, just set off, Dan. What do you, what do you make so far? Only, only only a couple of seconds into it. Yeah, it looks like we're just getting going through the town of Innsbruck now. I think we just um, crossed the finish line. So I'm expecting big crowds. <laughs> I'm obviously actually not selected for the World Championships yet. Hoping to be selected, but um, I think if all goes well in the lead up, I'll be there. So yeah, I'm really excited about this course. I think it'll be a real spectacle for spectators and really hard for us. So let's see what it's got to offer. Good stuff. So, um... Danny is going to be riding one lap today, which is 23 kilometres. Um, we just rode over the start finish, which had the, the famous rainbow bands um, painted on the floor, which uh, kind of sends sends goosebumps down your arms, really. Um, and one of the, obviously, the, the the amazing game changers that uh, Zwift bring to yeah the world and um, cer certainly the, the, the pro riders is you know, Danny's recon in this course now, and it's not just doing a recon for the sake of doing a recon um, and just a training session, Danny is genuinely, um, we were chatting about before we went on air, genuinely going to benefit from being able to ride the course, from the sensations, or, you know, the ele elevations, and even even the landmarkings. So, um, so far, Dan, any, anything to note on the course so far? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like Matt said, it's so good that we can come on to Zwift and not have to travel out to Innsbruck um, to look at the course. And, you know, it's so realistic. I uh, listened to the Zwift Cycling podcast that Matt, um, Kev and Greg Henderson recorded about the course. I think Greg had come out, uh, so this was, um, you know, made for the Zwift. And he said how realistic Zwift had made it after he wrecked it with a GoPro and cameras. So, um, yeah, it's amazing for us. And I'm just going <laughs> to keep going on it so I know it you know, like the back of my hand, almost with my eyes closed, because it's so beneficial to know the course, know when you can expend your energy or where the good for the attacks or to go back and get a bottle, feed in. So yeah, it's definitely um, brilliant. And obviously on the, um, on the elevation map in the top right, it looks pretty, pretty daunting. <laughs> Uh, you can see we're kind of on the, on the or you're on the flat bit at the moment, and then you just go up a monstrous climb. Um, so the course obviously looks pretty hilly. Yeah, so you can see it's even going up now, two percent. Um, should not really be able to feel that in a bunch, but you know if you're out there on your own, you'll definitely feel that. Um, and then yeah, you can see that we're about to hit a very long climb. Although I've heard it's quite. Um, you know, it sticks at the same gradient the whole way up, which, yeah, it's good and bad for different people depending on what kind of rider you are. I think for me, that's definitely a good thing. Um, I like that sort of consistency of a climb rather than different in elevation, but we'll see how hard it is now. Lovely. So, so yeah, literally, you can see it kind of just heading up into the mountains, the, the, the visuals of it. You can see it about to, about to climb. Um, so any any landmarks you pulled out so far? Um, the f first time on the course. For me, I could just say that it looks like it's a really wide road so far. So not so much battling for position um, until we kind of come into the lead into this climb, which 
our guess will be more narrow roads generally for, for a climb. That's a good point, good point. Um, sometimes people, riders in, in race situations get yeah, you know, quite stressed and animated you know, about being at the front. Um, but that's not always necessary. So being able to you know, have confidence that the start of the course is fairly open and you can, you know, you should be able to move up um, okay last minute. That's, can, uh, that's, that's great intel. Yeah, and you can see it's already at 8%, 9% here oh. leading into this roundabout, um, which I'm guessing is, you know, the lead into the bottom of the mountain. It's flattened off again now. So... Road's still looking pretty wide. Um, nice scenery, although I'm not sure we'll see much of it when we're racing, <laughs> especially when we get to this part of the course, because actually we would have already done a 90 kilometer run in to the lap. So for all the races, um, on men's and women's, you do the same 90 kilometer uh, route into Innsbruck. And then we finish with three laps of this. So I think this will be, I think it'll probably be all together before uh, we hit the lap and then the fireworks are probably going to start on this climb. Lovely. Just got a quick, quick question here from Natalie actually about um, how can she get the, the Zwift set up to be able to do this in, in her own garage. Um, go on to Zwift.com, all the information is there. And another quick question from uh, Grant Saney. Um, asking Danny, how are you going to approach this climb? Obviously, we haven't seen it yet, but roughly a 20 minute climb, come, come race day, what will be your tactics for going up this climb? Um, so for me, I think, like I said before, I'm the sort of rider that it's better to have consistent power the whole way up. So for the recce now, I try to sort of get into a rhythm, not ride too hard, and try to think as I'm going up, can I hold this for about 20 minutes? But in the race, obviously it's very different and you can't just stick to a power. I think that's where you need to kind of go a bit on instinct and feel, look what's happening in the race. Um, so kind of positioning is really important leading into the climb. I guess you don't want to be really far back and all the actions happening at the front because not only do you have to get an effort, make an effort then to get to the front, then you've got to try and follow whatever's happening at the front. So I think. It's like a happy medium if you can be top 20 ish going into the bottom of the climb you're never too far away from the action that's happening on the climb um, and then yeah like i said it's about seeing how the race pans out look who's making those moves are they dangerous could they potentially stay away um, and my tactic in the race which i have no idea what will be yet um, as to if i've got to react to those moves um, or just keep steady and hoping it will come back. So a quick, uh, quick comment for me, it's just about the, the gradient of this climb. Um, so we've got a couple of comments on, on Facebook, Dan, just saying this is where it starts kicking up, as if it's not kicking up already. Um, and you know, the weight of, or, or, yeah, the rider's weight is going to be so important for this world's course. Um, you know, this climb's going to be, we're estimating about, about 20 minutes long. Um, and you can see it's five percent now. It's been it's been around that four, five, six percent for a good yeah, a couple of k already. And if it's going to kick up even more, and we know the weight becomes even more important the steeper the climb gets. So um, you know, even at this this speed now, we're going it's up a four percent climb, travelling at twenty kilometres an hour. You know, weight is super important, but also being well positioned and in the wheels. So you know, there is a significant um, yeah aero and wind resistance gain to be had by being in the wheels. Whereas as the, as the gradient's near 10% um, and your speeds drop, it's going to be yeah le less important to be in the wheels um, and kind of more important to be setting a pace that suits you. Um, but really, that's where weight comes into it. And Dan, is um, how how keen are you going to be keeping an eye on your weight for for the world? Um, yeah, it's a really tough one because for me, I'm a more power strength based rider. So to be honest, I'm very heavy compared to the out and out climbers who are probably in the region of 48 kilos for the best women climbers and I'm 61, 62 kilos. So 14 kilos is a lot to drag up a hill. Um, but yeah, I will keep an eye on it and 
try and get it down um, a little bit but again you have to be really careful um, and there's a fine line between losing weight and losing power and ultimately my power is my strength so again it's not a course that absolutely suits me um, realistically um, I'm definitely not a favorite for this course um, but yeah I will definitely look see if I can shed around maybe even just a kilo or two because like Matt says when it ramps up over six seven percent it makes such a difference yeah and obviously the the danger is as a, as a rider you try and transform yourself from taking Danny as an example from being a kind of a, a punchy strong strong rider to being um, a, more of a climber you try and make that transition in a, a short period of time towards the end of the season there's just so many variables so much, so much room for error uh, chances are it's not going to happen you're going to lose a load of weight um, and lose a lot of power with it so again if if you are trying to kind of change the type of rider you are and suddenly lose a bit of weight and become uh, a better climber that takes quite, quite a long 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 time and um, so again it's, it's it's kind of marginal gains really that ultimately I think those riders who are who are you know, top top world-class climbers are gonna be the favorites for this race um, anyone outside that bracket is just trying to become as yeah as best they can on the day without with you know, be able to transform yourself too much yeah so, um, I, yeah sorry I was just saying I completely agree I think you know short term if I was to say try and just drop as much, many kilos as I could I'd get to the race and I would be terrible you know like you can't do you can't con transform yourself into I would class myself as an all-rounder I can sprint got quite a lot of muscle mass into a pure climber in in eight weeks it's just not going to happen yeah um, and it'll be more detrimental to my performance yeah for sure so like Matt said if you look at this course hear about this course a year out and then you can do something about it but it's definitely too late for me to become a mountain goat now um, and you know it's not what I want to do so I'll just have to go into this race look for opportunities you know like I said there's a 90k lead into this lap with a, a short climb in it potential breakaways you know it's, it's a bike race anything could happen so you know you never say never yep and there's the gradient now just kicking up to 10 percent so this is where it really gets tough and you can see that uh, Danny's speed here is down to 10 kilometers an hour so at this kind of speed you know aerodynamics is has gone out the window it's all about just yeah settling into a rhythm that suits you that you feel comfortable at um, and hopefully that's the pace that the, the, the group's going and um, do you want to just talk a little bit about the you know your approach to training and how you're going to be using Zwift and and the course on Innsbruck over the, over the next couple of weeks? I know um, you know without giving too many secrets away, uh, split days, kind of a, a session in the morning and then perhaps a, a Zwift session on the course in the afternoon is kind of where where you're heading, Dan. Yeah, definitely. I'm a massive believer in split days. I think you know you can find your form really quickly doing split days going out in the morning and getting that bit of endurance in and then you know making up the hours in the afternoon and having this course is just perfect because there's no reason why I wouldn't put this course on every session that I'm on with um, to just try and drill it into my head drill it into my legs um, and do intervals up the climb or you know base my session basically around any scenario that could happen in the race and what would be the one kind of go-to interval session you would uh, you'd use for a course like this to prepare for the climb? Um, I think I'd say sort of your sprints into threshold back to sprint. So replicating an attack, then having to keep pushing on the climb, and then another attack, and then keep pushing. So you know you probably the grimmest session that you could make up for yourself to be honest um, a really hard effort but they're not recovering because with the gradient even if you're to go slow you're still not recovering so um, yeah that's that's what I'd probably suggest yeah tough tough session so I think we call that EPDs maybe um, yeah basically doing a sprint follow an attack um, produce a load of lactate in your legs which feels really uncomfortable and also on the climb then you're not getting the chance to fully recover 
Um, and chances are that's, what, that's what's going to happen in the race. You know, the race isn't going to attack and then suddenly he's up. So Daniel's got to be prepared to make a big effort to likely follow uh, an attack, follow those big attacks from the climbers and settle back into a rhythm around threshold before maybe making another acceleration, another surge to follow another move or counter-attack, whatever it may be. I and can um, see um, it's just actually flattened off here a little yeah, bit. good notice. So after maybe, you know what we're looking at, five, five, six minutes of climbing, you know that you've got a little, maybe only, oh, it's back up now, so maybe a kilometre max of one, two percent, but that can make the difference, you know? Just gives you time to get your breath back. And like, you know, if you know it's coming, you can prepare and maybe go a little bit more into the red, um, knowing that you've got a little breather before now <laughs> it ramps right up again. You know what, that, that little breather, as well as being a physical breather, mentally, I know you, you basically alluded to this then, Dan, but mentally you, you can split the climb into two. You know, you get to that flat bit, it will, it will ease up a little bit. Um, and you will get a slight respite, so that's a great milestone to, uh, yeah, to ha have, have in your mind. That's, it's a shame everyone's got access to this, isn't it? Unless it's just, <laughs> I know, just, just you could have it. should keep it shouldn't we? <laughs> I just, yeah. Can we just lock it down, Zwift, and just release it after the worlds? Please. It's such a good tool, man. <laughs> Game changer. Game changer. Again, it's quite wide roads this climb, actually. I didn't know what to expect, but... It looks like you could be able to move around quite easily. You know, you're not stuck on a really narrow road, trying to fight your way to the front. Um, so that's good to see. Another little uh, benefit of seeing the course. Yep, and again, got... it's 2%. So there are little respites within this monster of a climb. It doesn't even look like we're halfway yet. Um, so. I'm enjoying these uh, shallower parts. Yeah. And here we go again. Back up. Back ah, up. so this is the start of the QM. Brilliant. So we hadn't, didn't even start the, <laughs> the climb yet. So there we are. Outrageous. Looks like we got 7.4k to go. So you've got quite a few people saying it's amazing how you can talk at this, <laughs> at this effort and this gradient. <laughs> it's not that easy, I'm not going to lie. I'm puffing quite hard, but... Making it look easy. Got a message. Some of these uh, changes in gradients, some of the flatter sections. I've got AJ here saying um, it could be a great opportunity for someone to attack. So it's an interesting point. <laughs> We're talking about opportunity to, to recover slightly. But for others, it may be thinking it's uh, an opportunity to attack. What's your take, what's your take on that, Dan? Yeah, 100%. I think with attacks, the best attacks are the ones that are surprising and where you can get a gap quickly. So I think on a shallower gradient, obviously you're going to be able to get up to a higher speed um, and ultimately get a bigger gap quickly. Yep. So I think that's, yeah, brilliant idea, but I'm not sure I'd be attacking with this long to go. But that's just a personal thing, I think. Yeah, like for the climbers, why not? Yeah, and just, just to recap on the course, the course is one leg of 80k? One, one, one out, 90. 90k, so you've got 90k from outside of Innsbruck into Innsbruck, and then the women do three laps of, of, of this loop one here. Um, so yeah, Dan, if, if we're on the first of these finishing laps, um, you know, that's a lot of racing to go. Uh, however, on, on the last time up, I guess we're, we're going to find out now what, what, what the course is like. Um, but on the last time up, what's your guess on how, what, what's the chances of a rider getting to the top of the climb solo and holding on to the finish? Um, massive chances, I think. Okay. Because obviously haven't seen it quite yet, but it looks like it's basically all downhill with a couple of K through the town to the finish. So, you know, that means if your rider's solo, they can probably get down the climb just as quick as a group because you know you can't really work together when you're going downhill especially if it's technical but again we'll see what it's like when we get over this climb and then yeah if it's through the towns probably be quite a lot of corners running into the finish line and again like it makes it even more likely that they'll be able to stay away yeah 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 
I'm gonna say about these split days and um, being so advantageous for, for yeah for, for bike riding and for your performance, you know, lead lead to you just becoming very fit. And I would say, you know, with, with with training twice in a day, you get two releases of all those you know, endorphins and, and testosterone, um, which obviously helps you yeah, a feel good, but also helps you know stimulate that that growth muscle growth and the like. Um, but also mentally, you know, rather than going out for you know, one four hour ride, say you can get the same physiological benefits by doing, say, two or three, or one hour to a uh, Zwift session and maybe an hour and a half um, road ride in the morning, commute to work, uh, commute back from work, something like that. So it doesn't mean you have to go out uh, for you know, a long time, where perhaps when the weather's bad, um, or if you haven't got the motivation, you can just jump on, jump on Zwift twice, or maybe go out for a shorter road ride and then jump on Zwift, and you're gonna get a huge bang for your buck. And a lot of it comes down to muscle tension. So out on the road, you know, there's a lot of freewheeling around bends, um, downhills and the like, um, and into roundabouts. Whereas on the turbo, you know, Danny's been riding for 21 minutes so far, and that has been 21 minutes while her muscles have been tensed and all the muscle fibers have been firing. Um, and you just get so much bang for your buck. Rather than having those little micro rests all the time, none of that. And it is absolutely fantastic for your endurance. And uh, there used to be a theory where you know, the, the pros would think to get to get fit, you go out and ride the hills. No, you ride hard up the hills. But actually, and um, this is something we I was talking about with Greg Henderson and Kev Poulton on the on the Zwift coaching podcast. The way to get fit actually is to go out in a small group um, or even a group just two of you um, and ride on the flat because on the flat you don't actually get any any rest by any rest. No, you 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 press on the pedals the whole time. So there's no kind of long periods where you're freewheeling recovering. On the downhills, and the same theory goes goes for on Zwift. Um, you know, you, you, you're pedaling, there's pressure on the pedals, your muscles are tense the whole time, and um, yeah, it just leads to you becoming a real fit person, um, which is which is really fantastic. I'm just looking at the gradient now, um, eleven percent. Very steep. Real steep. That is that yeah, is savage. Is a t- real tough part of the climb now. So for anyone who's um, yeah got any sort of um, yeah challenge that contains big climbs. Yeah, what, there's no better better uh, better setting to stick yourselves in to train other than, than Zwift, really. You know, unless you're out in live in the Alps or the Pyrenees or some real mountainous terrain, um, you know, stick yourself on Zwift. You can ride up up the Zwift. This course in Innsbruck offers you know fantastic opportunity to yeah train your your hill climbing and um, yeah from, from the comfort of your own home. It gives you that you know that that knowledge that come come event day you've done these big climbs in your garage. And again, look, it's gone right back down to 1%. So, you know, that really tough section of 10, 11%, you are going to get another breather. Not sure how long it's going to last, but... But look at, looking at your speed, Dan, you're up to 30k an hour now. So, in the race, you could easily be, if someone presses on here, you could easily be up to 40k an hour. And, of course, you know, being in the wheels, um, that that shelter you're going to get from the, from the wind is, is massive at these kind of speeds. So... It would take a really strong team, I think, to make it hard from very bottom to very top. Um, so I think, you know, the, certainly in the, in the first first two laps for the women, these flat sections or flat earth sections should definitely give you an opportunity for, to, to recover. Yeah, for sure. You can see it's still 2%. So yeah, like you say, this is a really good opportunity to get in the wheels, get on your drops, really save those watts that you're going to be needing for laps two, laps three, when uh, it's going to be kicking off. And yeah, so it's gone back up. So you can see as well after that little corner. Um, so it's a good like landmark to know that that's where your rest ends. Absolutely. And it's kicked back up now to nine, ten percent. And you'll come, come race day, you're going to be on the start line with this loop, this 23k loop, firmly ingrained in, in your head, aren't you? You're going to know it inside out. Yeah, I think I'll be sick of it. You'll be sick of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, what I've noticed is it's a very straight climb, um, which I think actually favours me and doesn't favour the attacks because there's nowhere really to hide and get out of sight. Um, so, you know, it gives that motivation to the riders behind to keep pressing on because you can always see someone in front of you. 
Yeah, absolutely. Very, very straight and very, uh, very, very undulating. But again, very, very hard climb to pace. At least I think if you're in the wheels in a group, you're gonna be able to, uh, yeah, kind of take take pace in off, uh, off, off your teammates, um, and off the rest of the bunch. But if someone has gone for a solo attack and it is just a small group, that's gonna be very hard to, to pace and judge your effort, isn't it? If you're on your own. Yeah, for sure. It's gonna be about settling into a rhythm if you are on your own and thinking again can I keep this up for 20 30 minutes yeah it looks like we're probably going off the, off the graph probably two-thirds of the way up this climb yeah nearly there nearly there yeah so what an interesting race will be will be the, the junior women so the junior women do one lap of this finishing finishing course so they don't cover any of the, any of the the course twice so if you're starting, it's basically like a point-to-point -point race. So for any junior women out there, um, you know, you basically get a chance to, to wreck this course and know it inside out, because um, you only got there once. You only get one chance, one shot, one opportunity, and all that to, to get it right. So um, no mar no margin forever. I think it's amazing that the juniors are coming up here as well, because I think stereotypically you see junior girls and finishing in a bunch sprint. So it really gives opportunities to those climbers that, yeah, the, the sprinters aren't going to be able to hang on on this climb, that's for sure. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be a really exciting race all round having this so close to the finish. Yeah, got a, got a question here about feeding um, and collecting bottles. So do you reckon the flat bits will be... Obviously, it depends where the feed is. Will you be looking to get a bottle halfway up the climb, or would you wait to the top, ideally? Ideally, I'd wait to the top because it's extra weight. So I think as long as you are being, you know, you're hydrated throughout the race, I think maybe you'd start the climb with half a bottle because it is a long climb, so you don't want to be completely out. But I'd never take a bottle halfway up. Um, because yeah, essentially I've got to carry it to the top. Yeah, absolutely. Got a got a message here from Adrian Timmis, who um, yeah, British Tour de France rider back I think before I was born, um, back when they were on bamboo bikes probably. And he's saying with four k with four k to go, there was um, there's a 50 second to one minute climb um, at around seven percent, and he's saying that could be a perfect chance to attack. So obviously we haven't seen that yet, but. Um, yeah, great intel there from uh, Adrian. We're yeah. going to see it in a minute. Yeah, for sure. It's not just about getting over this big climb. Um, there are, it's another climb to contend with. Interesting. Mm. Absolutely. Thanks for that, Adrian. And uh, we've got a question from, uh, from Johnny here saying, if you're selected for the road race, would you do the time trial as well? Um, no, I wouldn't. Um, it's such a specialist discipline. You saw that at you know, nationals and international time trials and yeah I'm strong but I'm not a time trial specialist it takes hours and hours and hours of real fine tuning whether that's with your position generally spending time on your time trial bike it's different producing power on a road bike to producing power on a time trial bike so you really have to invest and again going back to the goals if it's not a goal I don't really invest in it, so I'd never go into a time trial, um, you know, thinking I could win if I haven't invested the time and I haven't, so nope, just the road race for me. And uh, another question saying, what is your beverage of choice? I'm, I'm going I'm to take this as beverage in your bidon, <laughs> not in the pub. Uh, although it could be the same, maybe, <laughs> if I'm having a really bad day. No, um, I tend to, so... Wow Deals is sponsored by Sanas, a um, nutrition company. So we have, usually I go for a mixture of energy and electrolyte. I think electrolyte will be really important here. Because even if it's not hot, you're going to be sweating a lot with this constant effort. Um, so yeah, always energy. Need the carbs with a mixture of electrolyte to replace the uh, salts. That I'll be losing through sweat. Lovely, and I got a question from Kerry White asking if there'll be any special gearing. Uh, will you change your gears for, for, for this course, or do you think it'll be a standard standard setup? Oh, I think actually with the steep parts, I'd probably use a compact to be honest. 
I think you can, you know, save a lot of energy having the choice to spin a bit faster. Um, so yeah, looking at it now. That's interesting. I think I'd go compact. I think so. Wow. I do wonder, again, this will actually give us an opportunity in training to, um, to figure out what, what the best gear ratio is in. My, my gut kind of tells me a 39 for, for the women or maybe a 42 little wing for the men and on the back, stick a big cassette on the back. That'll, that should get you up. Yeah, maybe that combination instead. Have to look at the finish as well and yep. take everything into consideration. A big, big, big uh, factor to think about is we're doing one, one climb here, we're doing one lap. But in come, come race day, you've done that you know, 90k loop and then you're doing this course, you're doing this climb three times. Obviously that's a very different feeling, very different sensations to, uh, to doing it once, once fresh. Um, and that, that kind of goes for anyone doing any event really. It's, uh, it's all well and good wrecking an event or a, a route when you're, when you're fresh. Um, very different come event day. It's like you should never go shopping when you're, when you're hungry because you'll buy, all, buy all, the, all the junk food. Um, same with doing a climb. You wreck it when you're, when you're fresh. You kind of underestimate how tough the climbs are. So um, I can yeah. actually see the top if you look on the lap, the archway of the polka dot jersey. Is that the top? Is that the top? So yeah, just the archway. Um, you can see the archway, can you? <laughs> on the right hand side. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. So you are coming towards the top now. And it's flattening off slightly. Again, all very straight this climb. So we've got a question here from Steve Fry asking um, you know, some of the efforts you do on Zwift, would you also replicate those out on the road as well? Yeah, for sure. I think Zwift is such a great tool, but alongside riding on the road, you have to be able to ride a bike on the road as well, you know be able to change direction, change your gears, get out of the saddle, in the saddle. So yeah, it will definitely be a combination of Zwift and the efforts on the road. Yeah, because there, there is a slight difference between having your bike flat on, on, on the turbo um, compared to on the, in the outside world where you, you're going to climb your kind of like your, your tip back basically. Um, and that actually has a, a diff, a, a, an impact on the muscles that are used. So basically when you're kind of riding on the tops, your hip flexors are open as possible. Um, when you're in climb and you sit a bit further back, you use your hamstrings and your glutes a lot more. Um, and it's a little bit tricky to kind of activate those muscles in the same way um, on, on oh, a turbo trainer. Oh, someone's having a swim with me to with, the with, with the front wheel flat. Go on, down up, up. Oh, I think you got done there. I think you got done. Damn it. But um, just to finish on that briefly, while Danny consoles herself after just being... Can I just say, picked. it's going down straight away. Yes. So there's no false no flat. No flat over the top. You're going straight down. Yep. Obviously, one way to kind of replicate the uh, going up a hill on the turbo is to put a block under your front wheel. Um, but also the Wahoo Climber is a fantastic tool. We, we haven't got one at the moment. Um, might be worth looking to get one. That obviously adjusts the, your front wheel height with the gradient of the... Of the, of the climb. So there actually is a bit of flat now, um, slightly. So if you get bridged, gapped over the top, there's a little bit just over around the bend. We could potentially get back on, I would say, before it really goes down. Yeah, and depending on how steep this downhill is, uh, it could be a case of everyone just gets up to speed, tacks down, doesn't pedal. And in a way, everyone's going to be travelling pretty much the same speed. So if you've got a gap, um, it could be pretty hard to bring it back. You can see we're doing 58k an hour here. Yeah. And not really pressing on the pedals much. So you can just see first little corner that looks more like a chicane that you wouldn't have to break for. This is another really, really... Um, positive part of having this record because for me I'm not the best ascender so if I know in my head that I don't have to break for these little corners which you can't see the exit to that will really really benefit me more than those that are really confident so I have even more thanks to give to the Zwift guys for setting this up yeah it's a very straight descent we've had that one little chicane so far but these are long 
sweeping bends. Very, very, very steep. Like 13, 14% there. Wow. Yeah. So pretty much, I would say, come race day, you're going to be just tucking down. You won't be pedaling. Um, you know, anything over 10%, a long straight run at 10%, you're going to be getting, yeah, putting a big effort in, almost sprinting, getting up to speed, and just tucking down and getting as aerodynamic as, as possible. And especially for those junior category riders, you know, the junior men and junior women with, uh, with stricter gears. I mean, this, a lot of this is just be freewheeling. So once, once, the, once the gaps are made over that climb, very, very hard to come back. And I can see actually in the profile what the guy was talking about with the small little rise. Yep. I think that's coming up shortly. So I think that was 4K to go. Um, okay, so maybe not so I think what this, I can this, see with a little ramp now. Yeah, it might be a little kicker. But look at that, 13% downhill. So fast, so, so steep. So fast, yeah. Obviously very different to the um, downhill in the, the Rio Olympics course. Obviously there was a, there was a crash, wasn't there, in the women. There's loads of crashes. So hopefully this will be a lot more straightforward of a, a descent. Flattening it out a little bit. Yeah, so what looked like a little rise wasn't. It was just went from minus 14 to about minus uh, 3. So just shows how steep this descent is. But so far... I don't think there's any bends that you need to be no. really worried about. Maybe this one? This, no, it looks Even okay. Even that looks quite wide. Looks okay. That's a long swooping one. Literally, you're just going to be flying down here. And I'm just talking briefly about you know, descending technique. When you're in a, in a group like this, so there's, you know, if, if so Danny's on the front, but if, if you're in the slipstream of the riders, there's no point in doing any of these descending techniques where you're getting, trying to get super aero, kind of sitting on the top tube and all that, because you're in the slipstream. Um, you'll end up getting down low and then pu pulling your brakes on. Um, and my, my advice with, uh, with, with descending technique is unless you're super, super experienced, uh, and you're a professional and you do this day in, day out, make sure you've always got your hands on the brakes, um, hand, yeah, on, on the drops, grip, grab, grab the brakes, grab the drops tight sorry and uh, make sure you've got the brakes accessible um, there's no real need to sit, sit on the top tube um, yeah and unless you're actually doing the world's road race and you're maybe going solo and you're chasing those rainbow bands don't bother so still going down it's a long long rest and that's another thing I think when you're getting to the top of that climb if you're just getting gap, you know, like Matt said, when you're with a little group, you can just free wheel. So it's really worth giving it absolutely everything to stick, stay contacted with someone in front of you. So it'll make a big difference, especially now when you're going to be hitting more of the flat terrain. Yeah. Coming into, yeah, 7K to go. So i um, got a question here about how much time you normally get what does a normal recon look like so for the world champs last year um how much chance did you get to look at the course um so we had one day on the course came in i think two days before race day um we had one day normally we only have one day it's normally quite busy and you know a bit of a stressful situation normally riding from hotel to the start they have normally um dedicated times that they close the circuit where all the teams are on it. So again, you can't really do any specific efforts. So normally go out two days before, have a look at the course, get back, and then the day before race day then, don't go anywhere near it. You know, just stay around the hotel for a shorter ride probably. Um, so yeah, generally only once. Um, and for this, we probably do maybe, two, well, no, probably only one lap because of the climb. If it's a flat loop of say 23k you might do two um so i've just done the european championships we're staying about half an hour away from the course so we rode in did a lap rode back that's generally what we what we do to see the course and then you know we can use different tools like strava to really uh do some more research homework on the course 
Lovely. So six kilometres to go. The this is the run into the finish now. Um, so on the last lap, you know, the, the the big climb's done. We're looking out for this little kicker that Adrian Adrian's uh, suggested is is in, in the course. So what would you be thinking now, Dan? If um, no, for someone who is in the front group, let's say four rides in the front group, what would you be thinking now if um, if you were in the world? I'd be thinking, wow. <laughs> This is looking good for me because I can sprint. And then, yeah, again, it depends on what sort of rider you are. If you think you can beat them in the sprint, I'd be thinking of waiting to the sprint, um, looking at the last corner, how far it is to the finish. Um, and one big thing for me is riding on one side of the road. Something actually that Lizzie mentioned once that I really hung on to. If you're in a group and you're riding on one side of the road, and someone attacks, you've only got one side to look at, rather than if you ride in the middle of the road, riders can come from either side. So I thought that was a really good tip. That was a great tip. That was a great tip. But again, I'm giving all my tips away, so yeah, I hope there's all the no one listening that I'm gonna be in this front group with at yeah. the Worlds. <laughs> you see that actually with, um, with, with, with Sky in the, um, in, in the tours, whenever they got a lead out train, they'll either be on the far left or far right hand side of the road, never in the middle, um, and same same reason. If you're in the left hand gutter, you've got to you've got to keep an eye on one side of the road, keep an eye on the right hand side of the road, um, just making the job simpler. So, great bit of advice there. We've just gone under five k to go, so this is normally when things really start heating up, especially if it's a big group. You've got your lead out starting to set up, and people are getting really nervous then for the finish. Obviously, depending on how what will happen on the climb if the climb was ridden quite aggressively and um, you know we're saying on the downhill there's not going to be too much um regrouping on, on the descent because it is so fast but then on the flat here this is where there could, could be a lot of regrouping especially after the first lap and you know first lap of three for the women um, and the first lap of six for the men the first few laps if, if the race isn't on after the climb you could get riders grouping back I haven't seen much 0% gradient on this loop. It's all either up or down. I think it's gonna, oh, and we've just hit cobbles. Wow. So that's another thing. You're not really gonna be wanting to hit cobbles too far back in a big group. So especially, I think this will be really important for when we come off the 90K loop. Yep. Because we won't have long to hit the climb either. Um, obviously there's more likely to be crashes on cobbles. Um, I don't think these are harsh cobbles. I think they're okay. It'd be a bit of a yeah, bit, more parve sort of yeah. tiling cobbles. Like, that's it. That's it. But still good to be aware of again. Yep, absolutely. And also, having ridden wet, it now, really. you can see that they come with about four, just over four k to go. So yeah, definitely a lot more twisty. Um, again, we've been saying how straight the course is so far. Generally, um, we're heading to town now. Definitely a few more twists and turns. Nothing too steep. Yeah, for sure. And this is the kicker, I'm guessing. Ah, yes. This is Adrian's, Adrian's uh, launch pad. So this is really interesting. 4K to go. This is steep. This is a perfect opportunity for that last bid to attack for those who don't want to come down to sprint. This is a great opportunity. Yes, yeah, so coming back to if you're if you think you've got the best sprint in a, in a small group, you're going to hopefully uh, get up this climb and the, your little breakaway is going to be in, in contact. Whereas if, you're, if you haven't got a good sprint, this is maybe your final chance and your, your best opportunity to break your group up, get a gap uh, and maybe go solo. I'm guessing it's going to go to the corner. Yes. I'm hoping it is because I'm trying quite hard here. Yep. <laughs> As Danny just sticks the boot in. It's been nice and friendly so far, riding with the with other 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 guys in the session. Just dropping the hammer now, out, out the saddle a little bit. And critically, it'd be interesting to see what it's like over the top of this little rise. If it suddenly goes downhill, or whether it you know drags up a little bit more, or whether it just flattens out. Sharp right hand bend. So you know, intel wise, go straight to go. down. Straight down. Straight down at 9 10%.
So that really does favour a rider attacking up that climb. Because you get, get a bit of a gap, um, and get up to speed and tuck down. You know, well over 60k an hour here. They're going to be hard to, quite hard to bring you back. That is a great launch pad. That is a great launch pad. So basically from 4 to 3k to go, that one kilometre is roughly half a k uphill, half a k steep downhill, then it looks to flatten out and start rolling again. Going to be a worthy winner. <laughs> Definitely. So, who would be your pick for the uh, senior men and women? Oh, that's a great question. I said for the men before I'd seen the course nibbly, I said, I said but that well. seeing the descent now, I'm not so sure. I don't think it's actually a descent that favours the good descenders, if that makes sense. Yep. Because it's actually quite straight. Yep. Not technical at all. Yep. So, hmm. Maybe Geraint. That would be exciting. It would be exciting, yeah. I think it, you know, showed at the tour. Get over them. It's got a sprint, so could be could do the double. Yeah, I just wonder the only problem is he's, he may not have sobered up by then. <laughs> That's a <laughs> really good point. Um, but you're right, physically I think a rider like Geraint or, or Geraint could be um yeah, certainly a, a hot hot favourite if he if he rides. And how about the the women, senior women? <sighs> Me? No. Only kidding. Um, a pure climber. So, Annemiek van Vluten's obviously showed how strong she is this year climbing. Uh, Anna van der Brugge and Ashley Mormon Passio. Uh, they're probably the three stand up climbers, I'd say. Yep. Um, 2k to go. We've got two attackers going for a long one. <laughs> See if I can reel them back in, shall we? <laughs> So the gradient is, yeah, perfectly flat as we just ride alongside the river. Zero percent gradient. Looks like we've got a corner with about one and a half k to go. Yep. Be quite important. Absolutely. Yeah, just over over the bridge. So a little uh, one and a half k to go. Ninety right, quite a tight right over the bridge, and uh, kicks up over that bridge a little bit. And down on the other side. And again, another nice long straight section. It does look gradually downhill as we're going. Uh, oh no, it's flat. It's flat. Alongside the river. Alongside the river. Nice mountain range in the background. I'm sure you'll be appreciating that come race day. After the finish line, maybe. Some 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 clever fellas spent. Weeks and weeks and weeks designing that mountain in Zwift. I'm very appreciative. All the techie side, of it. yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> well done. One k to go. One k to go. This is where it really hots up. Might get on my drops. It's on the drops. You can do, you can do a sprint <laughs> finish. Gonna the mic. <laughs> All right. Nine hundred meters to go, and it does look pretty yeah, straight all the way to the finish. So in terms of finishes, the this, this is very untechnical, very straightforward, and um, so I think course as a whole, after one lap, I think it's fair to say that uh, it's going to be a, a very a very strong rider that's going to win, you're going to have a worthy winner. Um, chances are it's going to be someone you know, uh, kind of a, a famous name maybe, who's performed well in a lot of races and maybe won a lot. Uh, I don't think you'll get a surprise winner, just because the course is so, so hard. Quick fire question, Dan. Solo winner or small group to the finish? For the men. For the men, small group. For the women? Mm, solo. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I think I'd agree. 300 meters to go. Here we go. We're going. We're going. Up, 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 up. Come on, Dan, up, 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 up. 100 meters to go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. There we go, there's the finish. 
Yay! Nice green jersey. <laughs> Well, that um, group split up quite a lot. I think there's a uh, quite a big difference in ability there, but um, most of it we rode together. So there we go. There's a bit of an insight into what the course looks like. Hopefully, it uh, gives you a bit of an idea as to yeah what's going to be involved come come race day for for Danny and the rest of the pros, and yeah how good a, a tool it is really for anyone. Looking to train for, for the worlds or or your chosen chosen event, whatever it may be. Yeah, exactly. It's absolutely amazing to have this um, available to help with training leading into the event. I'll certainly be not be on it at all, and hopefully my rivals won't be. <laughs> there we go. Thanks for joining, guys. Um, Thank you. you Hope you, you enjoy do another. It. You do another one of these soon. Yeah. Not sure when, but keep an eye on those Rift Companion app um, <laughs> and the events for for when it is. So yeah. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye.